What's up, Scrollgers? It's Nerp here, and big news over the weekend. I qualified for the Minecon Open Finals. Uh, so as you can see right here, uh, on Sunday yesterday, uh, Antirad, Dialex, me, and Magpie Man um, were the four to be able to qualify. Uh, we joined Tajik, Jubape, Holofoil, and Chief Bromden in the finals. So six out of the eight players are Badgers. It's a good bet to bet on Badger winning that thing. So, in all that good news, unfortunately, I did drop a bit in the ladder. Uh, I was battling with Holofoil for the top, not Holofoil, Alpha Century for the top spot, and uh, I lost the match first. And then I just tumbled down, but I was still good enough for um, a two seed in the Minecon Open Qualifiers. Uh, so that was good enough. And uh, so, unfortunately, I did not get a weekly winner. Um, but today, we're going to look at some of those. Uh, matches. So as, as you can see, I'm probably on the bracket right now. Uh, I uh, first played computer. So each match is a best of three, and the tournament ends when the top four players are uh, decided. So you can see Computer Reader won, won his first match 2-0 uh, against Thrain. So then he had to face me. Um, and I first... I played Agroth against his Mono Decay, and I just aggroth him pretty easy. And then I played. Uh, hold on, I'm just looking this up in the challenge menu. And then I played my Automaton deck and beat his Tempo Order. Um, and then I moved on to the next round, and I faced. The winner of Bruno vs. Football Eddie, and I thought that would probably be my toughest matchup right in round two, because both those players are really good. I'm glad at least they have to t one of them has to take out the other, uh, so I only have to face one of them. I did face Bruno, who always gives me a tough time, and we'll, we're actually going to look at those matches in this video, I thought that was almost like the highlight of the tournament for me. It was three really intense matches, uh, so we're going to take a look at that, and I'll talk about them. But then, um, I did beat him, and moved on to play Taken. Uh, which uh, would decide me or Taken who would reserve a finalist, uh, final spot in Minecon Open. And I beat Taken 2 0. Uh, first, I played Automata Energy, beat his Poison deck, which I thought I was going to lose at first, but then I was just like X Cog, just kept on wrapping. And then I used uh, the, the Decay deck, uh, Mono Decay, and beat his Decay Growth. So I beat him 2 uh, there. But yeah, the highlight of the tournament for me was the three Bronal matches. They were really intense, so we're going to watch them, and um, we can take a look. So here we go. First, it was uh, me playing Tempo Order versus his Mono Decay. So... Interesting starting for me. I have two blessings of haste and decimation. Not what I want, but I do have a two drop into three drop, and I don't want to jinx it and just throw away my hand because that could be really bad for me. So he starts off with a ripper. Um, always not good if tempo order does not have the first creature on the field. I get rid of one of the scouts, play the scout, hoping to find a three drop or a four drop that I can put in my hand for later. Uh, you see that flash on the screen? That was just the sifting. You can't really see the sifting in uh, in replay mode, but it's all right. So uh, he just goes ahead and languages it, and he can move down if he wants just to engage it, and he does. Bronal is a top tier player, uh, so I'm very uh, afraid of going against him. Um, he knows what he's doing. I do. I have lost him before. So now uh, Bronal, he did have a soul steal. I guess he didn't feel the need to soul steal creature who's going to destroy this turn. That's true. And he goes with a brain life. So so far it looks like. He is doing a bit better, but not by much. Um, I play the Proud Mercenary. Still, I do have control of the board right now, so that's one thing. And Bruno goes back to him, and he has two options for a 4-drop. He goes with the Curse Monger. So, now I just have to build up my middle of the board and just pound in idols. Uh, so, Ducal Spearman probably isn't the best thing to pound in idols, but it is the 4-drop, and I want to use my resources efficiently. I actually played this deck. This is my Tempo Order Spiky deck, 
because I tr I thought that Bronal was gonna play a Tempo Order deck and Tempo Order versus Tempo Order Spiky, you gotta pick Tempo Order Spiky to win. Um, yeah, that's what that's what Bronal's been playing a lot, but I guess he predicted I'm going to probably switch decks. So, yeah. So I'm hanging up my guy that's gonna die from poison uh, out there anyways, he's gonna die. And I get down a fog drop vanguard. So I do get the big creature out. And things are going so-so. Uh, not as fast as I'd like Tempo Order to be. I don't have a skirmisher out. Um, looks like he has a board. As Tempo Order, you really have to make sure your opponent has no board whatsoever in the very early game. And now it's my turn. I have a couple infantrymen. I sacrifice over scrolls. And I do get uh, some pretty good creatures to play. So... I'm going to be able to kill that, but then I make the mistake of moving my proud mercenary down so I lose an attack on my spearman and let that guy, let that oblivion seeker attack. That was a mistake by me. Uh, I make that mistake all the time, moving my proud mercenary. <laughs> it just, I always forget uh, about its buff. Uh, but, yep, I guess it didn't matter in the end because the damning curse destroys that anyways. Uh, and then... That guy was, the Spearman was cursed by the Cursemonger, so the Ripper was able to take it out as well as itself. But I do replace my Damn and Curse Vanguard with another Vanguard, but this time it's just to protect, because now I'm not in a very good position. He is, he is a Decay, I'm Tempo Order, and it looks like he's going to be able to uh, kill my Vanguard at least, but instead he has the even better stuff. He's able to kill my Skirmisher and set up my Vanguard for a Soul Steal the following turn. He'd rather set up my Vanguard for a Soul Steal than uh, just outright destroy the Prad Mercenary. So he's definitely looking ahead. I am just like looking at a stronger board and my chances are not good for this game. Uh, this is kind of strange here. I do put one damage on the Blight Bear rather than destroy the Watcher. Uh, that's because I'm just kind of hoping he positions in a way that I can decimate uh, his row and use his Blight Bear to poison himself and not poison me. Um, so I'm just kind of taking a risk there. He does Necro get in. And uh, what Blinky always says, if the, uh, once the Decay player Necro gets uh, against Temple Order, the game is probably lost for Temple Order. And he's probably right. Uh, the fact that they were able to amass enough creatures on the board um, to even do that is not, uh, not a good sign for me. But I do have to build my board up really fast. Uh, he is... Bruno has good scrolls to do that as well. He goes to he goes to eight, so he can soul steal just speeding up the poison. Wants to limit the damage as fast as possible, and playing an oblivion seeker. Uh, this deck by Bruno is the same deck that the same decay deck that I've played it in this tournament and uh, the past few days. Uh, it's just kind of an an automaton counter. It's actually it might be exactly the same as Blinky's Blinky's deck guide video he posted. A day or two ago. It's mono decay, not really control, you just creature heavy. It's a good, nice counter for automatons. The only difference is my, with mine is I, with Blinkies, I took out a Nuru and I took out one, one something and put in two infested husks. Uh, I'm not sure what the other thing I took out, but yeah, back to the game. I do have to take out some of the creatures on the board, so I don't love using a Rosa Bean Potion just to take out a husk. But I can't really let him destroy me. And I do have spiky things out. He does have mostly melee creatures. And that was kind of weird. Why did I freeze there? Uh, so here, Bronal is able to play a Witch Doctor. And it's still looking ahead for him. But he is, I have to fight an uphill battle as Tempo Order. And I haven't destroyed a single idol yet. So this is going to be very tough. And he's at 9 resources. I'm at 6. 6 is a lot for Tempo Order to be on. Um, but... I need more, that's for sure. I toss the decimation, uh, finally. I was kind of holding on to that thing, hoping I can destroy like the Watcher and the Meyer Shambler in the same row and the Blight Bearer before, but I finally get rid of it, seeing a play with the Pride Mercenary is going to kill the Life Stealer, which is really the pressing issue. I mean, it does buff the Roger, he gets a Husk, but I gotta destroy that thing somehow. And uh, Bruno has another Damage Curse, a Harvester, and a Curse Mark. He gets... No, he doesn't get rid of it. He uses the damage curse on this three health skirmisher. Just to stop me from like clearing a board. And keeps the curse monger because he needs a human to go in front of that witch doctor. He doesn't want to lose the witch doctor or the rod eater. 
And now I'm without a skirmish drive, a lot of weak creatures in my board. At least it's kind of filled right now. But I do have a pother. That's a huge pother. Pothers are really important if you're playing against Decay. Flips also. Because Decay has so many, so many, relies a lot on positioning. Uh, with their Witch Doctor and their Rod Eaters, their Harvesters in the back, uh, their Blight Bearers. So it was, that was really a big pother. It could be looked at as a little turning point in the game. It looks like Bruno's still winning though. He's at nine resources. He has a Soul Steel, another Witch Doctor. So yeah, it looks like he's still winning, but now it looks like I might put up a fight. Uh, you don't really see this too often. Temple Order making a bit of a comeback. It's usually just damage the idols, clear the board, keep doing that until your opponent gets ahead and you can't do it anymore. But for some reason this game went like battling out in the beginning of the game and then somehow I came back and put more creatures in the board. Not sure how that happened. So I do go with a uh, Roast of Potion on my Skirmishers. Take as many creatures as I can. That will mean it's a giant Rod Eater. I could have destroyed the Rod Eater, but I'd rather destroy more creatures because I was afraid of another Necrogeddon. Um, and my, most of my creatures have three or less health, so Necrogeddon could clear my board very fast. And uh, he gets down a Black Bearer and an Oblivion Seeker. So those are two creatures that I don't really want to destroy, but I'm probably going to have to end up destroying if, because, I'm not, because I didn't really, I'm not really that close to winning the game. And this was a bad turn for me. I have seven resources, but I can only play a scout. Scout's not like uh, Aceborn Scholar. You're not going to draw the scroll right away, so I'm just playing a, a uh, I guess in this case, he's going to have more than two attack pieces of the Proud Merc, and I have a two coach in the field, but he's still a very weak creature uh, for an entire turn where he had seven resources. So that is not the play, not, it's not the turn you want to have um, when you're kind of trying to hold on uh, and you know this is not going to last much longer because you're the aggro player. But Peronov does something really weird here. He actually uses his 8 attack harvester to damage the spearman and keeps it on row with the blight bear. That's going to allow me to poison his whole row, destroying the rot eater in the back. And I'm just losing one creature that's not even going to die yet. So... I don't think that was that wise of Bruno. This almost let me just play, and I also played a Skirmisher too, and a Proud Mercenary. So that was, a, I think this is a big turn for me. This is probably the turning point of the turn where it looks like, wow, I might actually win this. After that terrible start and that pretty good start from Bruno, Tempo Order might actually come back in this game. There are two Harvesters in the bottom that I have to watch out for. It's starting to look like the idols on top are getting destroyed, but he does still have a bit of a board. Um, so there is a Pack Husk, and a Mire Mare. He does not have Dominion yet, so that Mire Mare is just a, it's merely a 2-2, just protecting the Harvester. I do have Blessing of Haste. Uh, unfortunately, I have to keep that because um, I have to destroy one of those Harvesters this turn. Uh, and I would have loved to play the Vanguard, but then I couldn't destroy a Harvester. A Harvester, and I decided to destroy that Harvester because this way I am at least... I'm at least running away from the other Harvester, kind of. I mean, the other Harvester can destroy a couple of my creatures, but I'm getting away so that it can't do that much damage to me. And there is the Witch Doctor. So, I am going to have to break through that thing. He has pretty healthy things on the board now. Now I'm a little worried. I'm saying to myself... Like, am I, is this going to come down to me finding three decimations in the middle idle? Uh, that's what I'm thinking. Um, I already sacrificed one de uh, two of the decimations, I think. Well, there's one. Actually, no, I, took, I think I sacrificed one decimation. So, there's a decimation. Just so uh, I have something to play this turn, because I can't play another Roller Ross, or it's going to destroy the other Roller Ross. And also, it lets me... That's, that one uh, Decimation Resonance actually lets me destroy the top idol and the second highest idol uh, because it increases all the attack perfectly. That was a good use of damage there, but maybe I shouldn't have done that because then uh, I just have to focus on the middle there. He does get a Soul Steal, and now my Skirmishers are on the top row, so I'm thinking, how am I going to come down there? There's a Giant Rod Eater, a Witch Doctor, a Harvester. He could keep putting units in front of there, and he does kill the Rolleros, the one thing I had attacked next turn. So I'm thinking, find two Decimations, come on. I know he probably has a. I didn't see a watcher in his deck yet, but uh, he definitely has Necrogens. So I do have to try to win this game quickly, or else he's gonna win it. Um, and I play like that. I don't move both skirmishers down because 
I know that then he can kill kill at least one of them. I want to protect both. And if he decides to move up, I can kill some other unit up there as well. I do have a favorite in my hand, so I'm thinking maybe if, if he doesn't damage curse my back skirmisher, I can put a favorite on it and hopefully wipe through the row and destroy the idol. But with a wish doctor in front, it doesn't look like I will, but I, I'm thinking maybe it's possible. He does destroy the roller off. And I top deck a decimation. I'm really thinking, does this give me the win after like almost the whole turn of thinking if it actually wins the game because I don't want to play it and then not sacrifice and not win. It does win, so I get a 10 attack skirmisher there. That is more than enough damage to destroy the idol. And wow, I did not expect to win that game after the early events. And I'm really happy that I moved up to a 1-0 uh, lead on Bronal. So here we're going to watch match 2. Alright, so the... Server's just updated for scrolls, so now there's um, all the changed scrolls of so the balance update. So I'm not sure if this replay is going to work. Hopefully it still works. So I did win match 1, onto match 2. Bronald goes first, so I'm now on the right side of the match. So don't get confused by that. The avatars might be swapped or something. Maybe that bug's fixed now. And uh, I switched to my automaton deck, and he switched to his tempo order deck. So a double deck switch. And here we go. Is this going to work? Looks like it is. Wow. I'm not sure, like, the changed scrolls, like Excogitator and Wind Up Autumn, so I'm not sure if uh, they'll be shown with their changes in this in the deck. Uh, but Brona goes for Mulligan there. He's running one of those super aggro tempo order decks with magnetizers and stirring effigies uh, just to get a lot of one countdown creatures and just do a lot of damage. Uh, so nothing that was nerfed yet in my hand. Uh, Bronal has two units on the board before I get anything. He just chooses to play the Stirring Effigy before the Magnetizer, interestingly. Maybe if he gets like a Roasted Bean Potion, he could destroy a three health uh, creature like a Canister Automaton. Canister Automaton is a, one of the better Automatons because you usually get a good trade with it because the thing that destroys it will take three damage. And three damage is a lot. Uh, sorry about that sound there. Um, so he does play Magnetizer, which is a bit of a problem, um, because it's going to stop my things from doing things. And Bronal also has a Focus, which interestingly he does not play. Uh, he decides to keep the Pother instead, and uh, stops my thing from attacking and deals 3 damage to my Forge. A Focus could have let him destroy the Forge because of the plus 1 attack. It would be, uh, I, I'm not sure, I guess he didn't want my, um, automaton to attack. I use a potency burst on a 2 health AG knight there. Not the best use of potency burst, but I didn't really have anything better to do. Uh, so I go with that. And this at least, uh, gives my chance, my forge a chance to live. And so far it's not looking too good for me. He's tempo order and he has a pretty good start. Uh, but I do a Thunder Hitch I can play next turn, so I hope he just lines everything up. And moving up, damaging that, may have given away my want to Thunder Surge. Because now, he does move away. So I don't have a perfect Thunder Surge, but I can't really just not Thunder Surge. That's really my play in hand. So uh, I do it anyways. Not as valuable, but it's something. Um, funny, this, this game, I thought I had a good early hand. Like a nice start, but he just tempo order he's just faster so uh, my good hand was kind of nullified um, I do get to survive with a a uh, blast automaton and he, I destroy his skirmisher with my with my uh, wind up I do draw a wind up automaton not wind up my you know canister I do draw a wind up here put it down with haste and destroy the vanguard uh, so that was a nice top deck there, and now I'm relatively safe, and this game looks like it might go back into my favor. Here, we can see, look, it, uh, oh, that's funny. So the replay mode shows wind-up automaton with three health, because that's what I had in the game. But then, but then it's yellow because it says it's buffed up to three health. That's cool. Okay, cool, so we have the old changes. I want to see me draw an X-Cog, see if it's 5 or 6 cost. I did play a Sudden Eruption a turn ago, and unfortunately I did not hit the Magnetizer, so I didn't move down. Um, and he does play Grounds of the Fallen, which is always bad. I decide to burn that, and then I sacrifice Sudden Eruption for Scrolls, 
And now I'm looking for my uh, stone enigmas. I run three stone enigmas. I actually usually run one or two, but I put an extra one or two in because I know Brona loves to play Grounds of the Fallen in his Tempo Order decks. Uh, and that could really hurt me with all the magic damage I play, and it lets him deal more damage. Um, but he moves down, so I am... You might say that I'm winning the game. I have seven resources, and I'm controlling the middle of the board. I have a Battle Dance Copper Automaton there, uh, so that can bring them down with haste, but not really the play yet. I could have attacked with my windup there, but that would just be dealing idle damage. I have to clear his board. Uh, Bruno plays a Skirmisher, and he uh, plays another Skirmisher. So now he's fighting me on two angles, which is not good for me, especially when I can't burn those things. I get rid of Valentinets, and now I have a Copper Automaton, Copper Automaton Battle Dance that could be used next turn to make everything attack. Um, so I have to position around here. I know that uh, the Blast Automaton and Gun Automaton will be attacking next turn as well with a Battle Dance. So I have to position kind of interestingly. He has another decent creature to play, this time the Ducal Skirmisher. And he also plays a Stirring Effigy. So, and he does activate Dominion now. So it looks good for me, but now it's looking it's interesting for him. He just has to destroy one more idol with tempo order. Uh, I do go with the copper automaton play because I don't really have anything better to do. And I have to destroy the stuff up there. Maybe not the best use of this. Maybe I should have taken out the things on top. Uh, but instead I let one of the skirmishers live because I wanted to take out the things on the bottom. Which I could be a mistake. Or actually I let both of them live on the bottom. Well, I live on the top, I mean. And he is able to... Uh, is he able to... No, he can't. He can't play the Grounds of the Fallen to increase it just yet. But um, he does go with a focus on a Relaross, which is able to clear my row and bring that to two decimation range. So Bronal just needs a single... One more decimation to win the game. He already has one in his hand. So, this is a good start for me, and my good control about, like, three turns ago completely erased. Uh, now, it's looking like he's going to tie this uh, best of three up, and it's going to come down to a third game. Uh, he just needs to find one more decimation. He does not have it yet, but just a blessing of haste or a father or something would help. He plays another Grounds of the Fallen. I'm thinking this is over four. Uh, maybe it would have been different if I drew my Stone Enigma, um, but I didn't. And now it's my turn, and I just have a couple uh, Akamatons to play, or I can make that thing attack. I think I have to make it attack because I have to destroy that Relaross, so not too bad here. I'm able to destroy two of his creatures, uh, but still he... Now, now I think I might be able to hold on to the game. I just need to make sure he doesn't get another Decimation. But uh, there he plays a one of those guys and a flip, which is going to allow him to bring that to two health and his decimation in his hand. He knows energy is no way of healing their idols. So that's going to be it for me next turn. I don't know it, but he has decimation in hand, which uh, I finally get the sudden number out, but too little too late. And he's going to tie this series up. It's going to come down to a deciding third game between uh, Bronal and me. Uh, and it should be a good one. So that is that. And the third game, we both switch decks. This time we both play Decay. So each match we both switched, we each of us switch decks. Uh, I played a different deck in each match. He played this Decay deck the first and the third match. Uh, yeah, here we go. So. Whoever wins this moves on to the next uh, next round. I guess you guys know what happens, so you know who wins. But if you don't remember, then just shush. <laughs> so my my starting hand, I have a uh, I have a turn two play into turn three play into turn four play. So it's not not uh, not too bad. Bronal does have a soul steals, and he has no two drop, but he has three drop and four drop. Uh, I have a Meyer Mare to play, but I elect not to play it because I know he's playing Decay and I don't want to be Soul Steeled. I don't want to give him that opportunity. That was a little weird play by me, I guess. Uh, many people would have just played it anyways. 
I think I'm the type of player to play it anyways, but I don't know why. I just felt like not playing it. I'm trying to play pretty perfectly uh, in the qualifier here. I want to make it to I want to make it to the Minecon finals. So here I play the no, he plays the brainless on my harvester. Uh, so that just tells me that harvester is not going to get to attack. It's going to die in four turns. Four things are not five things are not going to die before before it dies. So now it's just going to be a wall for me. I get down a curse monger, and uh, he goes ahead and plays a life stealer. So he has two pretty decent creatures on the board, and it looks like he has the lead in the early game. One more research than me. He went first, and uh, now I go to five just to play the curse monger. So I have two curse mongers in the field, and uh, curse mongers are really good in the decay versus decay matchup, especially for brain lice. And I have a brain lice in my hand, so by him playing the witch doctor this turn, it does allow me to curse that and put a brain lice on it. Um, he does destroy my uh, my poisoned harvester. He didn't have it; he could have just gotten idle damage. But he wants to destroy the chump blocker, so his life stealer can destroy something, and his life stealer will destroy my witch doctor now. Um, not something I love to do, but I didn't really have another choice. Uh, so now he goes, plays a harvester of his own, and now I have two creatures facing his three creatures that uh, Witch Doctor is about to die, and I'll draw a scroll. I draw two pack husks here, so pretty good draw there. That's going to protect me. Um, and now it's almost leading back towards my hero, so it's kind of back and forth right now in the early game. Uh, pretty close to K versus K match. Usually decay versus decay matches are really, really intense. Uh, they often come down to Necrogen plays and stuff like that. He does play a damning curse, which kind of hurts me. The d only deals the harvester one, even though I had a curse two, because curse does not increase magic damage. If you did not, if you did not know that, I got a little confused during the match, and I was like, "What? Wait, why is the harvester not at one health?" So now I'm just frantically searching for a brain lice because I have to destroy that harvester. And uh, I play Witch Doctor, which is okay. I mean, there's no humans in front of it. Those are those are undead creatures, but I guess it's still a six drop. And he has another harvester to play, and that is really not so good for me. Two harvesters to no harvesters. In the decay versus decay matchup, harvesters are very, very key. And, uh, yeah, it's looking very bad for me. I have to find a way to destroy uh, those harvesters. And now I do top deck a damning curse. So, I don't love damning cursing a 3 health curse 2 harvester, but I didn't have anything else to do. Um, I'm not going to shoot myself in the foot and damage the other one, and then the other one destroy my row. So I destroyed it, and now he's able to soul steal, which is going to put two damage on the witch doctor, which means it's going to die in two turns to a brain lice. Uh, so yeah. Now the game looks like Brunel is going to easily have this. Look at his board, look at my board, the witch doctor is about to die, um, and we have the same number of scrolls and scrolls and stuff. Actually no, I have more scrolls on him. And there, I just play a Oblivion Seeker. I'm making an interesting play here. A very risky play. If he is a Soul Steal, he the game might be out of reach for me. If he just Soul Steals my Wish Doctor and clears my, clears my board, he does not have a Soul Steal, so he can't attack this turn. And he moves up. Very interesting he moves up, because uh, that means he can't follow me if I move down. So that, that gives me a little bit of hope, a sliver of hope. Um, and I could just move away from the Harvester now and let it attack. But then, I top deck a Ripper. That was a huge top deck, because that's going to allow me to Ripper Necrogeddon. And I curse the Harvester so it can die. And now, it looks like it's close game again. Um, he is going to uh, have some scrolls from the Oblivion Seeker. But, I do have 8 resources. He has 6 resources. And I am in the middle of the board. He's at the bottom. Uh, but still, he does have stronger creatures on the board. He's a life stealer, um, although it does have curse too. And he plays his third harvester of the match, uh, another big threat I have to worry about, and a curse monger. So now I have to put some strong creatures on my own on the board. I do have a witch doctor and a harvester here. I do sacrifice the witch doctor. Seeing I don't really have any humans on the board, I feel like that was an okay play. I soul steal the ripper, and also I. Got rid of the Witch Doctor because I think I'm going to Necrogeddon again soon. I have a lot of weaker creatures on the board. I think another Necrogeddon is going to uh, be helpful. 
it's going to be hard to destroy stuff when he has those two four health creatures on the board right there. Uh, that's going to take multiple hits to destroy. And now I see a Witch Doctor come down, so I'm thinking, oh god, the Necrogen's going to do nothing against this. And Necrogen's just going to make his Harvester attack and all that stuff. So, uh, I only run two Damning Curses in this deck. I don't really love Damning Curse. Uh, so, I'm not, I don't see a way to destroy that Harvester that well. Uh, so I decide to languid it, just to soften the blow for when it does attack. And I get down an Oblivion Seeker. So lots of weak creatures. I do have all my husks from the Necrogen before attacking next turn. And now he plays, uh, he has a chance to just fill the board with more creatures. He does have a Brain Lice for my Harvester. And uh, at this point in the game, it doesn't really guarantee its death. Um, but it's still, oh, well, he has, I forgot about the uh, Curse Monger. So he curses, so that's going to guarantee his death. And that means I could Necrogen in here before the Harvester dies, but then I lose all the attack from the uh, from five creatures attacking this turn. So I do get a Harvester of my own, so that was a very uh, big uh, draw there that keeps me alive a little bit. Really, the only thing that's keeping me alive in this game is the Necrogen on a lot of creatures. I have to find a way to play a Necrogen and either win the game or almost clear his board. And I go with another Lingard on that Harvester, seeing I really have no way to destroy it. So now the Harvester is almost like a non-threat. Only has four Relentless Attack, not a huge deal. I lose the Oblivion Seeker here, but I do draw some scrolls. And uh, now I could go with a Necrogen, but it just doesn't really do a whole lot. Uh, I can't, and my Harvester is attacking this turn, so I can't really... Uh, a four to lose its eight attack, but I go with a third Lingo on the Harvester. It's the third Harvester in this game for a Bronal. I'm not, I'm not having anything with that third one. I'm just going to deny it, deny it an attack, give it two attack. So uh, I position around, seeing I might go with a Necrogen next turn. That's why I didn't really mind poisoning my uh, Darkling because it'll probably die to a Necrogen next turn anyways. And I do have two Meyer Shambles attacking though, so maybe I don't want a Necrogen, but he does the Languid one, so now I'm thinking, yeah, I'm probably going to Necrogen. As long as I can destroy most of his board, I think it's going to be worth it for me. Um, and I can destroy most of his board, because that bottom row just is going to take three husks to, husks to destroy. And uh, all that's going to happen, he's going to have another Witch Doctor attacking and a two attack Harvester. So, now I uh, decide to... Uh, do the Necrogen, I'm taking Infested Husk, I'm poisoning one of those things, but then I draw a Watcher, so that was a very good draw for me. Now the uh, now the Necrogen looks that much more pleasing. I do sacrifice my Darkling to get a little extra damage because that will activate the Watcher, so I can get two activatings on the Watcher uh, this turn for the Darkling. Then a Necrogen, the YOLO Necrogen. Uh, I heard on the stream Blinky thought it was a bit premature, and... Um, Maybe it, would, maybe it was, but I usually fall into the trap of Necrogenning too late. And seeing another Necrogen in hand, I know I could just, if that Watcher survives, I can Necrogen again and probably win the game. So, uh, I thought this was the right play. Um, and uh, it's able to destroy most of his board. He has uh, his most important creature still alive, or I guess that harvest is not very important, and he wishes he had a soul steal right now, because he has to destroy that watcher. He does have a languid unbind to destroy the watcher, or damning curse on the front uh, husk to destroy the watcher, but he decides not to do it. I think the languid unblind was probably what he should have done, um, but uh, he decides to not do it. He plays two pretty big, uh, pretty big, um, Mire Mares. I actually gave him the Dominion by destroying his Darkling to let him play those Mire Mares as huge creatures. Uh, but I have another Necrogeddon and I have a low Darkling, so this is going to be game for me. Um, I think it might be a 100% uh, chance I'm going to win this. And yeah, so wow. I was very surprised to win this game after, uh, after it looked like he had uh, the game of the bad Necrogeddons. They help a lot in this matchup. So, pretty funny. The game game one and game three, I beat Bronald, but both those games, it looked like I had to come from behind and uh, 
I was definitely going to lose it around the mid game. Um, but then the second game, it looked like I had a I had control of the game, and then I lost. So that's what happens in games with a uh, elite player versus elite player. Uh, you get really uh, good matches that anything can happen. So that is that. Those were uh, the three matches. I hope you enjoyed them. And now uh, I have to prepare for the Minecon Open with the new patch that just came out on the live server as I'm recording this. So I'll play around with the new changes. Maybe automatons won't be quite as strong anymore. They're probably still going to be really strong. And I'll prepare for that. Uh, the finals are this Saturday and Sunday. Um, cool prizes involved. Uh, and yeah, so like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more content. Follow on Twitch and Twitter. And I will see you all next time. Keep on scrolling, scrollgers.